Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Graham Clifford. Hi, my name is Shail Dalal. And we're going to be presenting our project we did on stereo visual odometry on the Kitty dataset today. So let's begin. We are going to start with the goal of the project and move into our approach. We're going to explain our entire method. Uh, we're going to look at some results uh, all the way through the talking about the approach. And then finally, we're going to conclude with some possible improvements to our method. So to begin, um, the Kitty dataset is a Series, see, there's, a, there's many data sets for computer vision. We're going to be using the visual odometry one. This is going to have grayscale images, Velodyne LiDAR data, ground truth poses, and then intrinsic parameters from the setup. So like transformation, transformation matrices between the two cameras in the stereo vision pair and the Velodyne LiDAR sensor. Um, lots of stuff like that. In, intrinsic camera parameters like the focal length. We're not going to be using the RGB uh, images. So let's talk about the goal now. The goal of the project is to implement stereo visual odometry using the grayscale images from the Kitty data set. Um, visual odometry is just estimating how the pose of the camera and the car itself changes throughout time, moving in space, using only the camera and tracking different key points between camera frames to estimate how the car is moving through space. Um, so with that, let's get into the method. So the first part of our approach was creating a disparity map uh, as you know, the studio cameras are like two different cameras set up a distance apart. Uh, so what this does is it takes camera like uh, pictures from it takes the details from both pictures and then creates a single image with all the information it can gather. So the first like we tried doing it with two different methods. The first one was called stereo PM, which is block model, and a stereo SGPM, which is semi global block model. The big difference between those two is the PM is a lot more is a lot quicker than stereo SGPM, but it also misses a lot of important key points. Uh, while the stereo SGPM doesn't, uh, the big reason is, as the name suggests, it's global, so it looks at it looks at the entire image and turns each image content with like each pixel. While stereo BM only looks at a window that has been predefined as a hyperparameter. Uh, the one big reason stereo BM uh, is uh, has doesn't have the best result is it struggles with a lot of accuracy in textureless and occluded regions like uh, and it cannot like create a smoother uh, disparity map uh, which will be seen here the first image in the on the slide is a stereo BM method and the second is SGBM it can be very easily seen that SGBM like uh, gives a very clean disparity map and it's very continuous in comparison to what the stereo BM does. Okay, so now we're going to talk about calculating depth. Now that we have the disparity map, the disparity is pretty much the ingredient that we need to uh, meet the depth map. Uh, so the depth map is just going to be how far we think each pixel is, the like actual object in each pixel, how far away that is from our left stereo camera. So the equation we can see here is z equals fb divided by d. z is the distance of the object away from the origin of the camera. f is the focal length of the camera. b is the baseline between the two cameras. That just means the distance between the stereo pair of cameras. And d will be the disparity that we just calculated in our disparity map. Uh, so we can basically just sweep through the entire image and compute this for each pixel. Uh, and then we'll have our depth map. And that's what we're going to do. Um, when the disparity sometimes is zero, especially with objects that are very far away, um, the object is not going to move around at all between images. It's going to stay in the same spot. So you're not going to have any disparity. So that means you need to catch that edge case. And for us, we're going to just set the disparity to a low number, 0 0.1. So that way, every time we have an outlier in our disparity map, we can catch that pretty easily, um, as you're going to see on the next slide. So the histogram there, that tiny, like the, the small column to the right between 3,500 and 4,000, that is our uh, that represents all the outliers that we caught. Um, so what we're going to want to do that the top image is showing our depth map with those outliers in the data, and it's making um, the image look less continuous. So we're going to filter all those outliers out, and uh, once we do that, we get the bottom image. And as you can see, it's a lot. It's a little easier to see what's going on. The depth map is a little clearer, and there's more um, like actual difference between objects in the in the map itself. Uh, so the next uh, approach, the next part of our approach is feature extraction. The features are probably one of the most important thing uh, we do in visual odometry. Uh, basically features are the important things that we want to keep track of. Uh, so basically when you're moving through uh, 
frames, you want to find things which do not change a lot through frames, and then uh, like find the distance or like the disparity between those two in the first and the next frame to see how much you moved. Uh, so we implement two uh, feature detectors. One is SIFT, one, one another one is ORB. SIFT stands for Scale Invariant Feature Transform, and ORB stands for Oriented Fast and Rotated Brief. Uh, so uh, SIFT, the big difference between them again is that ORB is really fast in terms of computing uh, cases because it only cares about corners and edges. Uh, while SIFT is a little bit slower because it goes to the image and finds all the possible pixels which can be scale and rotation invariant. So like even when the car or the uh, camera translates or rotates, uh, those pixels don't change enough so we can have all the, the information we need in the next frame and this frame. Uh, SIFT is really, really accurate in comparing and finding features which, which will help us in the feature extraction while or uh, does a good job. It's good it, it, because it's fast, it can be used in real time, op uh, real time operations. Uh, while SIFT is usually used for like non-real time, like uh, when you're doing offline, like we are doing here. Here is the result on how it would look. Uh, the first image is the SIFT, where you can see a lot of features are like all over the place, which is a good sign because you want features at different parts, different edges and everything. It helps us keep things, uh, it helps in finding features in the next uh, frame and like you can threshold it very well in terms of like everything else. While the orb finds features mostly in the center because it doesn't look for things that are like uh, translation invariant, uh, so like it and it doesn't work well with that. It. It's finding features mostly in the center, so like if there's a lot of rotation, it is gonna like mess up and the error starts accumulating there. But it still does a very good job in finding important features required. The next uh, important, the next step after doing f extracting the features is matching those features. So we use a brute force method to match our features between two camera frames, uh, where we own basically calculate the distance uh, uh, distance between the two key points that we have found. Uh, for SIFT, we are basically using the regular Euclidean distance because um, we have that much information that we can use Euclidean distance and find that. For OR, we use Hamming distance uh, because of the uh, not being as accurate is one of the reasons and like uh, going down on the binary level to like just do that it's also fast and uh, it gives a lot more results out of that. Uh, then uh, the image here shows us how the ratios work in terms of like how the SIFT and the ORB ratios, distance ratios come out between the closest and the next closest and uh, for uh, like mostly the sweet spot is around 0 0.4, 0 0.5, uh, but when we were implementing it, we found out that ORB works well enough in around 0.7 uh, because we need a lot more features. The lower the threshold, we miss a lot of uh, features, while the SIFT works very well with 0.3. Uh, this image can be, in this uh, slide, we can see that uh, the ORB feature matching, it finds a lot less features uh, in subsequ subsequent uh, frames while SIF does a very good job in like matching features and finding features in like each frame. Uh, as straight, like uh, the straighter the line, it, it means that it found features very well, uh, which is really a good sign in terms of like how our feature matching is working. ORP does a really good job in terms of everything else and it, found, it finds very good features. They're a little bit off, that's why we start accumulating error. But in like a real time uh, system, as it being like three times faster than SIF, it's a very good way to uh, approach this. Um, so let's go into the approach we took to actually calculate the odometry of the camera over time. Uh, so we, we use an OpenCV function like we've used for all these operations for the project. Uh, called solve PAP ransack, uh, and this allows us to calculate the tra camera's translation and rotation between sequential images. Um, so we just run through all the images and we accumulate the total transformation of the camera with respect to the global coordinate frame. This global coordinate frame is going to be placed at the initial position of the left camera. So like right when our first image, right when the left camera first pops up, that's going to be our global coordinate frame and all the translations are in, with respect to that very first position of the left camera. That's the global coordinate frame. Um, and then after we've calculated our odometry estimate, we bring in our ground truth data. 
um, provided by the Kitty data set, and we assess our accuracy with a couple different metrics. So let's take a look at some of the results for this. Um, these are a couple of the different odometry data sets from the group of them. There's 22 in all. I believe that might be incorrect. Um, so as you can see, in general, it's pretty decent. Um, there's some rotation that goes on, um, but in you know most of the you can see that with the SIFT feature detector, we're able to pretty accurately get like over a short time span, over a short distance, like an accurate representation of what the camera did compared to the ground truth. Of course, this is not perfect, but um, it's pretty reasonable. With orb, however, there must there was something wrong. I'm not really sure. We're not really sure what happened. We needed to spend more time probably playing around with the parameters of the orb feature detector. Um, nevertheless, these are the results we got. Occasionally, it seems like the feature detector and the odometry worked pretty well. You can take a look at the bottom left image at the beginning of the trajectory. You know, it follows the ground truth pretty okay, pretty decently before it goes off the rails. And obviously, the top image, it just seems to go crazy. So, um, unfortunate, but, uh, you know, computer vision is difficult, so it's okay. Um, here's some statistics that we took between the two feature detectors on data set 01. So the first three metrics are just different types of error, uh, mean absolute error, root mean squared error, and then mean squared error. Obviously, SIFT has a much lower error rate than ORB because we're having some issues with that, with that, with that feature detector. You can also see that the time it took to compute and run through all of the poses in this data set, uh, it's pretty much cut in half when we use ORB. So it's a very desirable thing. And the time to compute um, the transformation between frames was 0.16, uh, almost 0.17 for SIFT, and it was cut in half again for the ORB data set. So like we said, much faster, much better for a real-time application. We're using Python too, so you can get this even faster with C++. Uh, this unfortunately didn't work out super well, um, quality-wise. Um, so some improvements that we could possibly make to our project here would be to, uh, we have Velodyne LiDAR data available to us that we did not use. Um, so we could add a common filter to fuse some of this LiDAR data that's giving us another pretty reliable depth estimate with our stereo odometry estimates and our um, depth from the disparity map for the, for the two stereo cameras. And that could potentially get us better results um, with the odometry and more, more accurate results. Um, we could spend more time fiddling with and reading about and improving the ORB parameters. That way we'll be able to use the faster algorithm and who knows, potentially get the trajectory estimation to be more accurate. Um, and also we could use some SLAM techniques uh, like bundle adjustment to improve the trajectory estimate. So with this, once we come around to a full loop of the trajectory, we could do some sort of uh, SLAM techniques once we see the same features again to correct the trajectory over the entire period of time. And with this technique, you could really get the, the trajectory estimate to be extremely accurate. Um, I think that is all that we have for now. So I wanna say thank you for listening. And um, this has been our project. Thank you.